I'm going to have to fold it in. <laughs> okay. Well, you still got some of these feathers on there. Oh, do I? Yeah, in the inspection panel. <laughs> I was surprised there wasn't too much blood. You know, I must have just about got over the top of them, you know, if I maybe had six more inches. Uh-huh. <clears throat> oh, did it? Uh -huh. Oh. Well, I hope he suffered. I hope he wasn't killed outright. I want to torture <laughs> the sucker a little bit. There was about, I don't know, a flock of about 10 of them. But they came out like Roman candles out of the bush. Okay. If you need stills, I got a small camera like yours. I I've got I've got batteries in the tool oh, okay. tool bag. Okay. okay. Okay, we got this thing uh, opened up here, the wing tip off. Um, the access panel's been removed and the doubler from underneath. And uh, stall horn lift detector's been removed. So now we got access to the thing. And uh, got the block here piece of conduit or a piece of tubing to run it down in there so I can work with it and get that going here. block up in the front here and then this goes in and uh, snugs itself around the uh, spar there in that fashion we have to get the thing twisted and shoved up in there first Okay, I finally got this thing positioned in here after a half hour of fighting with it. There's the shoe thing braced up against the spar. center hole of the three that I've got here on the block pushed in there so now get the wrench and start cranking in there and uh, start pushing that thing out okay so now we start here, let's see if this thing's going to push out.
get over the direction the more it's sliding this direction on me. I will just push that button to stop it for now. The red one. You can hear it popping out. It's tearing, so. It's tearing? Yeah. What, cracking? Yeah. It's got probably about an eighth inch. Well, it's longer than that. It's probably about a... Right down here. Bring your finger right here. Oh. Okay. It's one of those sharp creases, like if you... Yeah. Okay, well... Brought some 200 mile an hour aluminum tape with me, so. Yeah. Donnie, you weren't trying to feather the prop, were you? No. <laughs> I'm amazed how the skin is all pulled nice and tight back here. It's got, you know, it was sort of baggy and... That's done wonders. Now, I want to do a little hammer work here. Now we don't get hammered, we're over getting that. Yeah. Be to... yeah.
Now, I'm going to put a little more pressure on it. Damn, this skin is nice up here now. Damn. <laughs> and then sell it? <laughs> Not really. You're just gonna have to patch it and you know do the proper whatever's. Well, except for the fact that we she cracked right there where it was really folded uh, came out pretty good I'll get the tool out of the wing and get in and work it a little bit from the inside and get some of these things smoothed out a bit more and we'll put a little bit of 200 knot tape over that area mm -hmm. and put the pieces back together mm -hmm. and uh, it ought to fly just fine Well, got some 200 knot aluminum tape on there, some bullet patch covering up that cracked skin. And uh, I think it's close enough to an airfoil that it ought to fly. Sure looks a lot different than it did. To repair this now, we'll take this strap off and uh, we're okay back to here so we'll cut right across here out to this rib leaving just a little skin on the inside and cut around it and go back on the bottom about that much try to stay forward of the inspection panel under there and see how much of that skin's going to come out and then delaminate from around here, peel that skin off, and we'll cut this section 
out of another wing and uh, put it in with a flange over with the doubler here and doubler across there and across the bottom and uh, then lay over the top of this rib and we we'll bond and rivet according to the repair manual leading edge repair section instructions and uh, cut the hole here put the stall worn and lift detector back in and uh, a little bit of filler over the rivets and the squirt some paint on it put the strap back on it will be done okay we got a donor wing over here we're going to get the skin off of for this thing I've got just a rough sketch laid out here of where we're going to piece this thing in and uh, got to lay it out on the bottom yet then get in here tomorrow and start doing surgery around this thing mark the coordinates of the where that hole's got to be so anyway um, moving on we got the strap off the middle this one over here we got this uh, we're going to use this section here I have to heat up delaminate this strip off of here because this is the wing that had it bonded down where that one was riveted down and that'll expose the gap underneath of this and uh, then over here is a rib we'll use to uh, sister up against the one that's in there to give us uh, our um, flange that we need to rivet to so we'll get more on this as it moves along and uh, job's underway while we're at it uh, had some cracks in his canopy so I uh, pulled it off and I've got the uh, thing we had it trussed up here glued the inside of it now we got glue on the outside he had this real nasty crack going here chunk busted out here but it was cracked that way that way and up through there and separating and this was cracked almost all the way down here and that was running around here and that was from a mechanic he took the thing too for annual two guys grabbed a hold of it and they didn't know how to slide the thing back correctly they wound up wrenching it and busted it and then also he had one propagating from here up to there I got that welded on both sides with uh, weld on number 16 which is the uh, thickened uh, uh, clear cement solvent for uh, plexiglass so anyway let that cure overnight and uh, we've got another crack up here I want to fix while it's off and uh, I have to pull the sunscreen out and get this first of all I want to get it from the outside get it stabilized and then um, then we'll um, pull the sunscreen out and do it from the inside that ought to make that thing live a while longer Get a little video of it starting here as the surgery begins. Dr. Phil <laughs> is in attendance. Do my best to fix it, Don. Got our coordinates all marked to how far things are from the trailing edge. And, yeah. Okay. Now, now it's gonna light. Two, 
<laughs> a little further along on this thing, cut out a bit more. Uh, that's the area that we're going to have to actually replace. Uh, we still got to cut out here onto the ribs and down and over and down there. And uh, we closed up this gap here. This rib had been pulled in and it popped the two rivets that were in there with spacers in between them, which are actually these little spacers here. And I've got it drawn together there now with uh, plates, um, doubler plates. I got one on the far inside, one in between, and one there. I'm going to have to put a thicker one in the middle, but that will draw them all together, and I'm actually going to bolt that forward one. And I may put screws and nuts through all three of them uh, to draw that together and hold it. And uh, that took the most of the ripple out of that bottom skin and uh, ironed stuff out there with some of my magic tools here that uh, are uh, made up to get in and iron wrinkles out of aluminum. Another one there. And then this, this little guy here. So anyway, uh, that was some bucking bars tapping out. Got the uh, rib straightened up. That was collapsed. Now we'll put our overlay rib on the way back on that and probably put one on the inside, draw them all together and uh, probably suck them together with Cherry Max rivets. And uh, that'll make them happy. That'll give us the flange sticking out here we need to rivet to. Anyway, onward and upward. Okay, surgery is in progress. And we're making good headway. Okay, what we've done here is uh, took that piece of rib off of that other wing and we got it in there doubling up the rib that had we had to straighten up and this gives it good structure and it also gives us something to lay the skin on. Got a little bit of tweaking and wiggling to do here on this to get that uh, so it pulls <coughs> down. I have to fill over it. This is the original rib here, and I've still got to make a thicker spacer to go in here so that it doesn't pigeon toe in so much. But this, uh, um, they had two rivets through this thing and uh, with spacers in there, and they pulled away, so I had to flatten the ribs out squish back in there which was an interesting little process and got it together and so we're going to put this back together with actual hardware and screws and uh, the doubler down here joggles to go over the rib there comes across the bottom joggles to go over this one and um, be the same thing up here come across like that and then the skin section that we cut will uh, fit right in there, inlay, and it's uh, going to be fun to buck what rivets we can get to, and we'll have to pull a few, <clears throat> but we'll use the bonding uh, material as well, and uh, it'll all be good. So... <clears throat> More on it later. Here's our uh, repair section to cut out another wing. The uh, lower, lower half of it, there's what we'll use. And um, 
and we'll cut out what's what's needed to the other half here has got a dent in it, but the, the part we're going to use there is virgin. So that should just drop right in and we'll have to get our hole located exactly in the right place. It's nice to have a stash of donor parts. Okay, what we ended up doing here is making a center plate thicker and I made it more of the shape of the inside of the rib. There we are. Still using the rectangulars here and then one on the inside. We had to thin one of them down in there because the screws weren't quite long enough. But So we're running 832 screws through them. Nuts on the back side, and that will draw those ribs together. Should be fine. First doubler riveted and bonded in place. Ran the rivets on the patch rib and uh, it's all riveted in place now. I'm sistered up to the other one and these doublers riveted in here today and then make the skin to fit and go on from there. Test fitting here, drill a couple of holes up the top so we can clico things in place. Take her back off, trim off some excess metal. Go back and have to get this thing worked down to where it cuts in line with that and in line with this one over here. Okay, well we got this thing just about ready to bond and rivet. Patch is all fitted in. The location marked here for the stall horn. Yeah, we'll get this thing riveted in, bonded up tomorrow, and let it cure over Sunday. And Monday we should be able to clean it up and put filler on and get that thing toward ready to paint. Okay, well we've got it all nailed down and bonded. And so everything's clicoed in place, and rather than going ahead and drive the rivets wet, we elected to leave it like this, let it cure go back in because don't want to take a chance on anything shifty. Is this sucker so smooth now it's just incredible. Went ahead and ran the uh, AVAX rivets in this side to uh, nail it down to that rib because these are going to be covered with the with the gap strip that goes across here. And uh, man this this sucker looks like a Dead gun porcupine there, but not a bad job, huh? <laughs> <laughs> 
And that is a bunch of clinkos. It's so sweet. I like the machine that one. It's always fun. The jumper always wonders, how can how do you do that stuff? Well, you know, experience is one, schooling is another. Out here we just being out in the field. Drill these, pull these rivets in here. This is the this leading edge. But this was not doing anything. This is overlapping into the extra section, a rib that we put in. Okay, we'll let that cure. This is Saturday afternoon. We'll let that cure, and uh, then Monday we'll come in and pull Clicos and drive the little tiny rivets, the uh, NAS 1097. I started doing this kind of stuff building hangers. 83-3s, they've got just almost a head on them. So a counter sump 20 thousandths. Works real good, bucks them down. And with it all riveted and everything, or uh, bonded anyway, then these have just become really safeties. Okay, we're driving rivets here. And a few holes there, we want to size up just a tad bit. These are all running good. We're going to run these around here. We'll do some sanding and smear some body filler. Okay, the rivets are all in. We're down to fine tuning and a little bit of tapping and tweaking. And Wound up pulling rivets down through here. Just could not get adequately in there to buckle. Pull an extra in, a couple in here to suck that skin down. And then this will all fill over it. A little bit of a depression right here, but that'll fill. Gotta bevel the skin edge just a little bit here from some overhang. Yeah, we'll get the stall horn horn in and the uh, doubler ring in and all that. Get this puppy cleaned up, ready to start sanding, put some paint on. Okay, we've got a little bottom shot of this thing here after she's all riveted up. And we've got some uh, strips of Y370 in here. We've got one going back under the spar here. To support this area here and uh, then one going across up here give a little bit of stiffness to that skin got a little crease here to fill with body filler and along with these a little bit of sanding to do back up in here we still got some goose remnants going back through here to clean off and uh, get this thing bondoed up and ready to shoot. Stall horn prepped here. Some fresh putty around the leading edge area where it squishes in there. Put some actual nut clips, Essna clips on the uh, slide slots rather than those phony little tournament clips that the factory, factory put on them. There we are. So it's ready to ready to go in. The double ring here ready to go back in. Yeah, we went ahead and got the canopy on last night and got the lift wheel fairing back on. There's the painting. Okay.
get this thing body worked out and get paint on it so that it can cure over the weekend and ready to go home next week. I mentioned the stuff we put in there for backing, called it Y370. It's what it used to be called, it's a different number now, but it's made by 3M. And it's a uh, quarter inch thick, dense foam, closed cell foam uh, called vibration dampening tape. And this is the stuff that you see throughout the fuselage and in the wings and various other places that the factory used it for exactly what we did. Is take areas that are prone to oil canning and uh, peel the back strip off and stick this stuff down in. And it uh, stops that and it stops the vibration. And we've used it in the past, especially on two-place airplanes, to just completely cut pieces to pretty well line the whole inside of the fuselage. Weighs about 14 pounds on a two-place. But I tell you, it just quietens that airplane down unbelievably inside. An original Yankee, uh, this was back in the 70s, we uh, had a pretty fancy decimeter that the uh, airport pain field loaned us that had a suitcase thing with a printout and all that in it. And we uh, were able to take that thing out. We got a Yankee, which a, an original stock Yankee uh, at ear level was 116 decibels, which is past the threshold of pain. And we were able, by doing that and using carpeting, or you know, carpeting inside and upholstery, fully upholstered the inside of it, and putting uh, the uh, 3 16 glass and everything in, we were able to get the Yankee, original AA-1, down to 97.6, I think it was, decibels at ear level in the cabin. And a uh, 79 Tiger was uh, 78, 79 Tiger were like 91 to 92 decibels. Yeah, so it was pretty, pretty unbelievable. Well, we're down to the body work now. Put one uh, application of filler on and got that sanded down. On well, the second half of the application, we got to kind of layer it as we go. Yep, little by little. What I'm using for filler is uh, Evercoat's polyester glazing putty, which is um, my favorite. It's a finishing putty. You put it on very, very thin. I'm not supposed to put it on any thicker than an eighth of an inch in an application, and. Uh, so uh, I use the blue cream hardener with it, so I kind of spotted it. Very little hardener goes into the thing. It um, kicks pretty quick. So if you got any work, want any work life, you just mix just a little bit in, mix it up, and then let the stuff kick off. If too much in it, that strucker will kick in about two minutes. So anyway, more later. Okay, still sanding and filling and sanding and filling and sanding and filling and on and on and on. Getting this thing to gradually work pretty well into position. And uh, I think probably about one more swipe of fill after this one is done. We'll probably pretty well have it, have it whipped. Try to get some primer on this thing yet tonight.
And I think people were bringing back to talk about the um, video. That was really the latest thing. And everyone was making a big deal Interesting, the, uh, the uh, stalwart horn didn't work. The customer said it hadn't worked for a while, and he thought it was a uh, uh, bad switch. Turns out that at some time in past history, some mechanic uh, disconnected it, and not only disconnected it, but he took he clipped all the wires off of the little electronic controller and <laughs> capped them off, left everything hanging in there, and um, cut the wire back in the loom a ways, the power wire to the saw horn. <clears throat> People have been signing this thing off for annuals, I don't know how many years. <laughs> well, anyway, we finally traced it all down, finally had to dig down into the, cut the bundle apart, find the rest of the missing wire, and so uh, it's uh, all hooked back up again, and it actually works. Got the nine second delay and all of that. Uh, the controller I'm talking about that they cut, cut the wires off of was like this one here. This is a used one. I put one like this in it. But the uh, we got a wire going to a wrist lock there, and a yellow and a black and a red one. And they just clipped all those things off, right? It basically the thing, except they clipped the power wire back in the loom. Uh, go figure. I don't know how they, how or why, but anyway, we see weird things. Okay, big milestone. We got primer on. That's what a good looking wing looks like. The objective of repairing Grumman wings is to make it look like it never happened. <laughs> Interesting way of masking off the uh, <laughs> hole there where the inspection panel goes. Took a five inch DA disc self-adhesive old one and stuck that sucker right up against the doubler. Okay. Well, let that set for another hour or two. Cure real good and then I'll do a light sand on it. Except that puppy for paint. I'm real happy the way that came out when you used it. Not as near perfect as she's going to get. Well, in the final crowning glory, the paint went on very, very nice. A couple of bugs had to make their presence known, but It'll clean out real easy. I think I like that Nason's paint. That stuff is so, so nice. It just lays out like, like it ought to. tell you there is no indication <laughs> where that damage is I would defy anybody without looking inside that wing to even begin to suspect where that damage is
Quite happy with it. Okay, the job is complete. Paint matches real nice. Buff that original paint out and put a shine on it like the other. Look good. Well, it's smoother than this wing is. Factory, factory putty there that never got done right. Yeah, good buff out. Looks like it will be good as new almost. I'm happy with it. Okay, well, little bird going away. Hopefully, you don't hear any more big birds. Yeah, September 26th, 2016. About 77, 78 degrees out here, beautiful day. Late September, just can't, can't get much better than this. Literally zero wind. Good day to fly. See how this little 125 horse 1C gets out of here with him and about, oh, about two-thirds tanks of fuel, a little over half anyway. Okay, he's gone. Well, now that we're all practiced up on that procedure, got this wing here that was sent in to us from California. That it's a purple glue wing. It's got a lot of delamination. Got hit right in between the inboard panel and the outboard panel. It's off a 75 Tiger. 
and some fool got in here to the and slushed the inside the slushing compound which is a no-no uh, anyway the wing was shipped up to us for repair a year ago and we told the guy we wouldn't advise repairing this wing purple glue wings or purple glue wings we'd have to do a lot of riveting in addition to the the uh, damage area so trying to find him another wing thing sat dormant for almost a year and then he decided he wanted it fixed and then I eh, wasn't sure and so it sat for a while longer and so now all of a sudden he decides he wants it fixed <sighs> gotta find him a wing I just can't see taking the man's money in all honesty for fixing a piece of crap I know we'd have as much in it as uh, we could get him a wing for oh well onward and upward <laughs>